Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly and we're going back down memory lane at WDAS and the Freedom Shows. And I am joined by Wen Alexander. She's the executive director of WDASHistory.org. And you're going to take us on a little walk down memory lane. Good to see you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. These Freedom Shows, tell me a little bit about what they were exactly and how they came about. Well, this is way before Live Aid or We Are the World or any of the big benefits that we all know about today. These freedom shows were begun in the early 1960s. They ran into the 70s when organizations which are now huge institutions had just been born. I'm talking about the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, mm, SCLC, mm -hmm. here in uh, Philadelphia locally, Reverend Leon Sullivan's OIC had just begun its legendary work, Dr. King's legendary work. The NAACP, while a venerable organization founded in 1909, the 1950s, 60s, and 70s posed tremendous problems that, and money needed to be raised. So these were socially conscious efforts. Yeah. And these were amazing. I've seen a list of, you know, just a couple of the shows in terms of who was actually on stage together. Uh, Bob Klein, John Bandy, Jimmy Bishop, and Georgie Woods, uh, the latter three guys, Klein, Bandy, and, and uh, I'm sorry, Klein, Bishop, and Woods, uh, became partners, uh, and they would put on extravaganzas. There's no normally when you went to a great concert, you had an amazing headliner, an A act, maybe one or two B acts, and the opener. Uh, on one concert, you would see Jerry Butler, Curtis Mayfield, and the Impressions, Stevie Wonder. And Eddie Floyd and <laughs> Little Richard. I saw one concert. There was Neil, Di Neil Diamond and James Brown. That hosted by Muhammad Ali. Yes, you're you're <laughs> bringing up uh, Bob Klein's one of his the biggest accomplishments. He did a very early TV telethon, and you're right. Dion Warwick was on the same bill as the Staple Singers, as Frankie Valli, the man you said James Brown. Yet Neil Diamond and yet yeah, Muhammad Ali was one of the hosts. Wow. What did these do actually in terms of moving towards the efforts in the civil rights period and also times of turmoil in the 70s? Just like today, when you have socially conscious folks who are doing the right thing, you need the resources and the fuel that money provides. And so these concerts, the acts, were extraordinarily generous. They literally would come in as long as you gave them a good hotel room. Hmm. That was it, so that all the money raised went to the organizations designated that night. For instance, one concert, it was SCLC and the NAACP. They would tell uh, the audience who was going to be the beneficiary and then bring in that enormous array of talent. Wow, wow. A nice walk down memory lane. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if something like that could be done today, but at least we have the memory. It could. <laughs> yeah, you think so? I do. The scheduling would be the main issue, though, I bet. You're right. <laughs> All right. Well, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Pleasure. All right. I'm Candace Kelly for Comcast Newsmakers. Thanks so much for joining us.